Hello, today I received a shipment with a small round LCD display from Elecro. The device is packed in two boxes so that it is fully protected from damage during transportation. Inside there is a display, a USB cable for power and communication, as well as an additional cable for connecting an external module. So this is Crow Panel 1.28 inch HMI SP32 rotary display, 240 on 240 pixels which has some really impressive features, high performance ESP32 S3 chip, a Wi-Fi and low power Bluetooth, capacitive touch screen with knob, 5 WS2812 RGB LEDs and the rotary encoder in the form of a circular ring. It supports Arduino ID, Lua RTOS, Home Assistant, Platformio, MicroPython and LVGL library. When the device is turned on for the first time, a demo application is installed that represents several basic features on the display. Thanks to the high resolution, the image on the display is clear and beautifully visible for, from different angles. This is my first time encountering this display, so I decided to use it to create a device that would demonstrate all of its features. Ultavis, as a passionate shortwave listener, I was impressed by the original idea of TU Ebo from TJ Lab for making a VFO with virtual retro circular scales. The circular shape of this display is ideal for making such a device, so I decided to make a similar but also useful and functional device based on the previously mentioned project. The fact that this display contains a built-in rotary encoder, button and touch screen makes it even more usable for this purpose. Also very important is the fact, fact that we only need to solder a few wires to make a fully functional DFO so that even a beginner in this field can beginner in this field can easily make it. So to make the device we generally need only two components. Crow panel 1.28 inch HMI ESP32 rotary display 240 on 240 with, with touch function and SI5351 clock generator module. Of course, if we want the device to be independent and universal, we need to install a 3.7 lithium battery, 3.7 volt lithium battery. Next, a switch and suitable connector. The device should be installed in a small box. It's useful to also include a small battery charger module in the box because, but I didn't have one at the time that cost less than, than a dollar. Let's see what the display looks like with all the information and functions. Immediately after switching on, we get a lot of information on the display. First of all, there is a window with two virtual scales that rotates in a ratio 1 to 10. Both scales are marked in 10th. In the middle of the scale, there is a vertical red line 
that indicates the exact frequency of the scales. In the lower part of the display is presented the generated frequency with, with large blue numbers. Immediately above this information on the sides in yellow letters is the band and wave late. And in the middle is shown the step with which the scale moves then turning the, rot the rotary encoder. And the bottom are two buttons B plus and B minus which are touch sensitive and are used to change the band. At the bottom of the display are two buttons which we can change the band B minus and B plus. When touching the button, it briefly changes color to red to let us know that it is activated. Band minus and band plus. At the same time, the frequency band and scale changes. I determine the width of each band to be maximum so that when one band ends, it immediately continues to the next. Now it's shortwave 4 and shortwave 5. I did this so that we can continuously scan all frequencies. The transition from one band to other is signaled by a short flash of red on the corresponding button. Band minus, shortwave chatter, uh, 4, and band plus, shortwave 5. Also, shortwave 6, and band minus, shortwave 5. Let me emphasize that the touch function only responds on the lower part of the screen where the buttons are drawn. In this, only in this part. So as you can see, we have all the functions of this small this on this small display module. The rotary encoder responds very easily and precisely, and it is also robustly made in such a way that the specifically processed inner edge of the ring, of the ring dial activates two micro switches which guarant uh, long-term operation. The image on the screen is extremely clear and readable from every angle and the touch is of that capacitive type and responds immediately when the finger approaches to the button. Next, let's trace the shape of the output signal on an oscilloscope. It is clear that it depends exclusively on the SI5351 module and to some extent on the library that drives it. The frequency range, range of the generated signal is impressive and can range from a few tens of kilohertz to over uh, 160 megahertz.
And finally a short conclusion. This is easy to build VFO variable frequency oscillator that features a clear touch enable circular display with retro scale virtual scales. The combination of the crow panel ESP32 display and SI5351 module allows for a wide frequency range and precise control with minimal wearing.